foreign national at the center of a coronavirus scare has been declared a by word the that needs to become commonplace is rationing. Across the globe, men and women, boys and girls, everyone has been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, though in various and distinct ways. The pre-COVID-19 gender inequalities make women particularly vulnerable to the new crisis. These are the voices of St. Lucian women. We flipped through a few stations showing breaking news. COVID-19, they called it. We flipped to find something less troubling. Thank God I'm from the beautiful island of St. Lucia. But then it changed. March 23rd, 2020. Lockdown. Closed down. Shut down. Since uh, COVID-19 and St. Lucia closed its borders to international flights, um, I've been home. I've been out of work. Not enough food to eat to give your to for the family, the household. Because due to that, my husband, he's doing minibus. The minibus association had to be going down to ten people and the money's not coming in. You have loans to pay. You have kids to sell. They're not at school now, but then you have stuff to money to get to put stuff in the house for them. It has been really, really, really tough. During the lockdown, everything was closed, so a lot of crops went to waste, actually. There was nowhere to sell them, and some of them we just had to give away. Well, we have so many persons who have to make that choice of, do you pay for Wi-Fi and internet? Because the children have to do online schooling, as opposed to, do you pay a bill, your electricity bill, your water bill, and do you buy food to put on the table? Yes, we might be firefighters and persons might be filling our, our salaries, all that, but by the time you pay for all of your bills and childcare and everything else, it's severely reduced. You heard a lot of stories, so you thought it would go away. Um, by that time, I think we were already closed when the news came out. They sent you home and you just thought it was going to be a week or two, and it, was, it would go or go away. Um, but that didn't happen and then the weeks went and then the months went and then I had been home from March till December. We spent money we didn't have in installing those face basins as well as paying for labor. I couldn't get free labor and also to having to put up any chat it had to be it has to be laminated nothing, we couldn't put up chats as we wanted to. So this was an additional ex expense. The one institution I am very thankful for who assisted us um, is the Labry Credit Union. Thanks to Mr. Levick and his team, they gave us some funds and as well as a small loan. In 2020, a qualitative study was conducted by Dr. Julie Xavier on behalf of UN Women called Voices of St. Lucian Women, a study of the impact of COVID-19 on frontline workers, small entrepreneurs, preschool teachers, and hospitality workers. The research found that the COVID-19 pandemic has adversely affected respondents in multiple aspects of life. 100% of hospitality workers, 95% of frontline workers, 100% of preschool teachers, and 94% of small business owners who participated in the study acknowledged that they had experienced a one or more negative effect of the pandemic. The pandemic has disrupted their livelihoods, their lifestyles, their families, their psychological state of mind, and their physical well-being. While more men 
than women have died from COVID-19. Um, globally, what we are seeing is that the impact on women and men have been different, and that is because of pre-existing uh, inequalities before the pandemic that have now been magnified or made worse as a result of the pandemic. Um, in the case of St. Lucia, um, specifically, 57% of tourism workers, this is before COVID-19, were women and f about 43% were men. So it's not surprising that um, when we looked at the job losses as a result of COVID-19 in the Caribbean and in St. Lucia, that more women uh, lost their jobs than men. And that is because of the decline in tourist arrivals and the decline in the tourism sector as a whole. What we are also seeing is that uh, because women work in sectors where they interact more with people and so that provides an opportunity for transmission of the virus and being infected so we are talking about pr professions such as nursing frontline health workers grocery store workers um, we see that these uh, they are at the front line of the pandemic, they are more likely um, to be infected. Globally, as I'm sure you know, we've seen increases in domestic violence, and this has, uh, should come as no surprise because during curfews and lockdowns, women were literally locked in their homes with uh, partners um, that may be violent. And so this increased the opportunity for violence. Uh, so we see this increase in violence globally in the Caribbean and reports of violence increasing in St. Lucia as well. Sadly, what the COVID-19 pandemic showed is that um, because women were trapped in their homes with their abusers, cases uh, of uh, domestic violence, or at least reports of domestic violence globally, and this includes St. Lucia, uh, increased. And so we have to also look at how responsive our security um, uh, apparatus is to, to um, cases of, of uh, intimate partner violence. We must scale up resources for uh, helplines, for shelters, access to mental health and psychological support and other services. These services must be classified as essential services so that um, it, during periods of curfews and lockdowns, um, even though there may be uh, orders that uh, require that people remain at home, if they are experiencing violence, they must be allowed to escape that violence and access these services, which we advocate must be classified as essential services. Every organization has been affected by COVID-19. I experienced it for myself. It's happening at every single station. Persons are in quarantine. The crews are shot and yet the calls are increasing. So our, the firefighters are under a lot of strain, a lot of stress. We need psychological counseling at this very moment. For me, I was expecting my second child and um, I actually left for vacation in January of 2020 and I stayed out for seven months. And I'm a mother of two, my children are very young and um, the constant threat of bringing COVID to them is always at the forefront of my mind, especially because I work in the fire service and I come in contact and interact with the public on a daily basis in my, in my field. I was part of a team to put together the COVID-19 protocol. And while taking part in the formation of the document, I realized, wow, there's a lot of work to be done. And I was wrong about June. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna close one of the schools. The pressure of reorganizing, relooking at our procedures, basically that was a lot to cope with. At the same time, I had to be giving support to the organization, to the Early Childhood, National, National Association of Early Childhood practitioners, um, giving support to other administrators, that was, that was just a lot to deal with.
I think initially when COVID hit, we expected to be home for two, three months. But being home and not having a job, we've had to spend, well, kind of like with someone myself, I'm a single mom. So I had to really reprioritize lots of things that in my life to more or less try to combat um, the implications that COVID would likely have on my finances. So, you know, um, we had to more or less scale down a lot on the things that we love to do. Um, and for Summer, my daughter, she is 11. She understood that. As the months progress, you realize, okay, you don't have a job. The bills are still there. You still have to eat. And how are you going to cope? I had to more or less um, depend a lot on my family, especially my sister, you know, for support, for financial help. Working women in St. Lucia have either become unemployed, had to endure a salary cut, or have found themselves as the primary, or in some cases, the sole breadwinner. I have a loan to meet, and it's been difficult. Way difficult that my husband had to be brought to the wellness center. Well, go to the wellness center due to they repossess the bus from us. It was a challenge. I mean, it was a challenge. I had to be up and down. I had to be um leaving work, going to work, coming from work, and to come home. My head like it was, you know, it's it like it was really hard. I've been going to go and get a loan to clear off what I have or to help me to do one, and everywhere will refuse you. Nobody will not help you. Nobody will not tell you, well, okay, we'll try to help. Our numbers dropped drastically. And for this reason, I had to lay off two staff members, having less children, financially. Since we depend solely on parents' fees, financially, it was, it's been a challenge. After the time they spent home and these children came in, I must say, they really needed an outlet to let out their energies. As well as emotionally, I think these children were, they, need, they, they were shaken in that being cooped up at home, not seeing their friends, not being able to go out there, not celebrating birthdays and special occasions. So coming back to school, you could see they were full of energy. They had so much to talk about. Before COVID, I was a spa manager at one of the hotels in the north. You still don't understand what, what happened. It's like you're still in a dream. To be honest, it was a real challenge. The commitments that I had, um, well, the debt collectors, I would say the bank or the other um, um, commitments that I had, they're a little lean, they were a little lenient, like especially with the bank, um, they had given me a moratorium on my loan. So that, I didn't have to worry about that for a couple months. Resilient, that's what we are. That is who we are as women. For some, we found our strength, our vocation. For others, we slowed down and found solace in the quiet. Being home, I've really had time to smell the roses, to do the things that I've always wanted to do, to be able to get 10 hours sleep and more, to be able to read the books I've not been able to read and to be able to spend quality time with my daughter. I got to spend more time with my children. They were home constantly. We got to do things together, um, bake cakes and make bread and, you know, just overall bond. Like when people were going stir crazy in the house, they couldn't get out. I, I was having the time of my life with my children. It makes you slow down and get some balance in your life. Um, you know, emotionally, financially, physically, because I also walked a lot. Like I would get up in the morning and just walk, 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 <laughs> as far as I can go. Not only government, our policy makers, our public servants, it takes business owners, managers, spouses, families. Be our partners, hear our stories, listen to our voice. It takes all of us to do this. And I also um, 
got to start off my own business. Um, thank God I had the space available because I've always wanted to go into it, but because of work, you know, when you're in the hospitality, it's not um, family friendly, so it takes all of your time. So I didn't have the time to set it up. So at that time, I said, you know what? Credential, get up and get something going. I was home a lot. I was home 24 seven actually. Um, so I had seeds in the fridge and I, the kids, the kids are very helpful. So I took them to the garden with me. They help out in whatever capacity they could. And I have one part-time worker also. So he came also when he could and we just enlarged on the farm. Well, it was, it was something I'd always been planning to do, but I always put it on the back burner because I thought that I needed the other income to supplement my the children and um, their growth and going to school and stuff. So that kind of helped me put my dream forward. When I had my son, I was out for a period of seven months. But the in St. Lucia and I suppose most um, Caribbean islands, it's only 90 days for a newborn mother being out on maternity leave. We're going through COVID and as new mothers, coming back into an environment where you're exposed after three months and your child is still so young, that's when they're most vulnerable and you're most vulnerable. So it would be good if they could at least look into extending the period to at least the six month period. Uh, you know, just to help, help out in, in safeguarding you and safeguarding your family. I think for me, training, training in a new field, in a new skill, you know, I've been for the last 20 years of my life in customer service. I know more or less in the next few months or maybe even a year or two years, maybe the tourism industry might not pick up as quickly as we expect it to. And at the moment, we have so many people unemployed. Especially for women, I think there should be a kind of support system. Somebody you can, I don't know if it's uh, you can call or counseling or that kind of thing. The Ministry of Agriculture needs to be to make their um their programs more inclusive and they need to advertise more because sometimes when I hear about programs they're already in progress and I can't register for them. Sometimes not everybody goes on social media all the time, you understand? Or um we don't even know if there's a site for the Ministry of Agriculture. I don't even know if there's a site for the Ministry of Agriculture. If they're on Facebook, if they're on Instagram. If you have ads on the radio, like my radio is on 24-7, you know, or on the news, you put a notification on the news or something, like that's more good to reach me than if I have to be on social media. We will not have resilient economies if half of the workforce are unemployed or that their unemployment rates increase, which is what we are seeing in COVID. So that means that we have to invest in women's economic security. And what do we mean by that? We mean we have to not only restore their livelihoods to pre-pandemic levels, we want to use the opportunity to also make these livelihoods more resilient more resilient to the impact of disasters. And I'm talking about various kinds of disasters, not just health disasters like COVID, but also clim uh, climactic disasters and um, economic shocks as well. So our social protection systems must become more resilient. This means that our health systems, which is part of the social protection system, must become more accessible and affordable and reachable by every everyone, um, including women, um, but also men. Prior to the pandemic, men tend to access healthcare services at much lower rates than women. So we have to address that as well. Uh, another thing we have to address is the is access to childcare services. We have to make childcare services more accessible and affordable. And we are seeing calls for this in St. Lucia, but also globally as well. Childcare services must become more accessible and affordable. And this is clear in St. Lucia and globally where they are increasing calls for investment in uh, child care services. In the United States, we saw uh, an investment recently, not only of millions of dollars, but billions of dollars in revitalizing the child care services. And um, this is because it's quite clear that women's capacity to seek and maintain employment is very much linked to their ability to access affordable 
and safe and quality childcare. And that will obtain, of course, in, in St. Lucia as well. We also need to look at retooling and reskilling the capacity of, of workers to return to the economy. I think this is very important as well for women who have been retrenched from the tourism sector, men as well. As I said earlier, because women are employed at higher rates than men, obviously that means that there are many women disproportionately who have become unemployed because they've lost their jobs in the tourism sector. So reskilling and retooling these women to be able to function in the economy um, would mean that we have to look at how they are going to be able to function in the new economies, the digital economy. Women-operated businesses as well must be able to um, access uh, loans, they must be able to access financing support. A lot of unregistered businesses which are operated by women um, as well need these supports to bring them into the formal sector and to, to have them become competitive. I think it's also very important post the pandemic that we think about our food sovereignty. What the COVID-19 pandemic showed us is that we can no longer become economies in the Caribbean, including in St. Lucia, that are dependent on food imports for our food security and our nutrition security. This means that we have to not only um, return our uh, agricultural sector to pre-pandemic levels, uh, but we also need to invest and strengthen and expand um, the agriculture sector. And we cannot have a revitalized agriculture sector without women farmers and women agripreneurs. These uh, agripreneurs and farmers need to be able to access um, skills, knowledge, um, supports uh, at equitable rates as their male counterparts. Gender equality is everybody's business. That gender equality is not about one group of persons advancing, but it's about humanity advancing. Achieving gender equality is also everybody's responsibility. Yeah.